What is going on there YouTube and welcome back to another comic book video. This is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book stories from all the different comic book companies out there. Today, we are going to jump back over to Marvel Comics and we are going to pick up with the Ultimate Marvel Universe. Over the last couple years, we have been covering this universe and we are now in phase two of the Ultimate Marvel Universe. Today's book finally answers one of the biggest questions of the Ultimate Marvel Universe. What is the true origin of Thor? In this video, Jonathan Hickman gives us three different time periods to follow Thor through to learn the origin of Thor in this universe. And so if you do like today's comic book video, please leave me a like down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come like this in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's video. So the way this book opens up, we see the Norse Stones. The Norse Stones are going to play a very important role in this book, and we will learn more about these stones later on. Except after turning the page, we are being introduced to Asgard as it is going through the Ragnarok event. For the ones out there who don't know what Ragnarok is, it is a thing in Norse mythology where Asgard and Asgardians are wiped out through the events of Ragnarok. Except once it is all done, the gods are usually reborn. Except we see human soldiers who resemble World War II soldiers and the Frost Giants. And so the question is, how did these two were able to form an alliance? Now that took place in the past, but now picking up months before the present day, we pick up with James Braddock, who in this universe works for the British division of S.H.I.E.L.D., but he is greeted by his son, Brian Braddock, where the two of them go downstairs and we get introduced to Donald Blake. Now, this is a huge moment because in the main Marvel Universe, Donald Blake and Thor were the same person, just two different personalities that Thor used, except in this universe, they are separate people because we see Donald Blake was brought here to figure out what is wrong with Thor because Thor was brought to James for an experiment because he was the perfect person for the experiment. But something snapped where he thinks that he is actually a god. Something I wanna point out is that when it came to Thor in this universe, people thought he was crazy since he was claiming that he was a god. But to the people of Earth, Norse mythology is not real. And so the big question was for a while, is Thor really a god or not? Even though he has proven it multiple times that he has some kind of connections to Asgard. But once he start proving it, some people of Earth did start believing that Thor is from Asgard, that Thor is a god. But getting back to the story, remember how we saw soldiers that looked like World War II soldiers in the flashback of Asgard falling? Well, they were, because we pick up with the German army in World War II era, where we get introduced to Baron Zemo, who is usually a villain for Captain America, but now being used for this Thor book where we see him meeting up with Henrich Himmir. I know I just butchered that name. Where he is making a request to take 100,000 soldiers because Baron Zemo somehow was able to get his hands on the Norse stones. Again, these stones are going to be very important for this story. Now, remember how I said in the introduction of this video that we will be following Thor in three different times. And so we pick up with Thor when he is young, but we see him with his brother Loki before they became enemies. Also, we do get to meet Baldur, the third son of Odin but I think he is the oldest one. And we see them fighting against some of the Frost Giants. We learn through Loki that the Frost Giants and the Asgardians have been in this never ending war. That is something huge to talk about because remember in the new Ultimate storyline, we heard a story from Loki about how the Frost Giants and the Asgardians had issues. And so this makes sense. 
but Loki wants this war to end. Except you have Baldur say that apparently Odin is making something that would help them end this war. Where we actually see that Odin is working with other people in Asgard to make some kind of weapon. Now to close on the first chapter of this book, we pick back up in the World War II era. Where we see Baron Zemo and his army had arrived at something he calls the access point. Where apparently using three of the 24 stones gives you access to one of the different realms that ties into the world tree. You have Baron Zemo tell his second in command that he would need to keep three of the stones for himself. But they're going to use three of the stones right now. Which does open a portal for Baron Zemo to call in the Frost Giants. This is where we see how these two form an alliance that leads into them invading Asgard that leads into Ragnarok. Now back in the time period that takes place months before the present day, you have Donald Blake tell the Brodox that Thor is not crazy. That actually Thor's MRI scan shows that he is remembering everything about Asgard. It's more proof that Thor is not crazy. But jumping back over to the time period where Thor was still in Asgard, we learn the war finally did end between the Frost Giants and the Asgardians, where of course Asgard won the war. But this is where we see that they're having some kind of competition as a way to celebrate the big win. Now honestly, this fight really does seem like it is not important at all, but it is somewhat important. Because right after Baldur wins the competition, you have Thor be the one to announce the winner. Except when he does, he shows off the hammer that his father built. Of course, this hammer is more near and shows everyone there at the competition grounds what the hammer can actually do. But jumping back over to the World War II era, we actually pick up with Baron Zemo talking to the leader of the Frost Giants, which is Mammoth. Now, Mammoth is confused on why Baron Zemo thinks men will be able to help the Giants take over Asgard. This is where you have Baron Zemo show that he is holding the Norse stones in his possession, which does make all the Frost Giants realize that men could actually help them take over Asgard. Then we jump back to when Thor was young, but after the end of the Great War. This is a really important moment here. Because you have Odin ask Thor what he knows about the Norse stones, where Thor thinks the stones were powered by Asgard itself, except you have Odin tell Thor that is a lie. That basically Asgard itself has no powers, that all the power of Asgard is inside Odin. But Odin put pieces of his powers in the Norse stones, Thor's hammer and Thor himself as well and tells Thor that when Ragnarok comes and everything dies, Thor, Thor's hammer and the stones, will be able to live on to help Asgard restart after Ragnarok. But getting back to Thor being locked up and Donald Blake is trying to show the products that Thor is not crazy, you have James tell his son Brian that he wants to stop all of this. But this is where we learn from Brian that these two have been working on a project that involves Thor. Too much money has been spent to have the project shut down. And so they let Donald Blake work on Thor to help Thor remember who he is. What this project is, we'll learn later on. But jumping to the period of time where Asgard was around, we see Loki meeting up with the Frost Giants. The reason why is because just like Loki in the main Marvel Universe, this Loki is a half Frost Giant, half Asgardian. We see Loki go visit his biological mother. We learn she has not talked to Loki in over a hundred years. There have been so many reasons why she has not talked to him, but Loki has been trying to get her to talk to him for once. And this is where you have her finally talk to Loki, but tells him to go grab the Norse stones. But picking back up in the World War II era, we see two things happen here. The first is that the Frost Giants and Baron Zemo had agreed to work together because Baron Zemo has the Norse stones. The question is, 
Still, how in the world did Baron Zemo get his hands on the North Stones? But before we are able to learn about that, we see Baron Zemo hand his second in command three of the stones to bring back here later on as the rest of the army in the frost giants leave for asgard now as soon as they get there to asgard that is when they're confronted by heimdall of this universe getting our first look at him but we see him trying to protect the path to asgard from baron zemo and the frost giants where first the giants are struggling to kill off heimdall but then out of nowhere an arrow appears shooting him right in the eye this is where we learn that Baron Zemo is actually Loki pretending to be someone else for his big plans, which tells us that he is the one who brings Ragnarok to Asgard's front door. But after the death of Heimdall, this leads into the Norse Stones being given to certain members of the Nazi army. Also the fact that those same men who retrieved the Norse Stones also had drunk the blood of Heimdall as a way to power up. This leads right into the beginning part of the video where we saw the beginning of Ragnarok. Of course, Odin and Thor hear what is happening outside. Odin tells us that he knew this was coming and he knew it would be Loki. Now their goal for them is to give back at Loki for what he did and we learn what Loki did here in a few seconds. And so the story jumps back a couple years ago where we learn what Loki did which of course the story jumps back to us seeing Loki walking into the room of Odin where he takes the North Stones but you have Baldur walk in the older brother of Loki and Thor. Except when he walked in on Loki, Loki got scared by his greeting that Loki shot arrows that badly injured Baldur. Now this is where you have Baldur tell Loki that Odin gave Baldur an ability as well, which was being able to see in the future that he knew Loki was one day was going to do this. Baldur was going to be killed and Loki would be the one to bring Ragnarok to Asgard. Then you see Loki kill his brother Baldur off. And so this was something that was going to happen for years and Baldur knew about it. And so when we do go back in time when Ragnarok is happening, we see everything is falling apart for Asgard. This is truly the end, but you have some of the Asgardians tell Thor to retreat back to Odin and hopefully they can escape so that Asgard can live on with them. But this is Loki truly bringing the end to his people. But getting back to the time where we see Thor is locked up, the Brodocks are trying to see if Thor is crazy or he is actually a god. But we see Brian Brodock talking to Thor about this project. Again, we do not know what this project is. And even though Donald Blake has proven multiple times that Thor is the god of thunder reborn into this world, Brian still having some doubts, but he wants Thor to give his word that when they give him this project, he will do right with the power that's given to him. This leads us back to the moments of Ragnarok. We see Thor is making it back to his father, but he is shot by an arrow. And so you have Odin take Thor's place in the fight against Loki, where of course Odin does overpower Loki very quickly. But we see that Odin is putting Loki into the room with no doors, which is inside the world tree. This realm where there is no way out unless Odin is the one to pull you out or if someone else used an item to get you out of there. And so Loki was supposed to be trapped in there forever, except we know that Loki was not because of Ultimates 2 and New Ultimates with him being around in the ultimate Marvel universe. Now, right after Odin does that to Loki, you had a story show us that Odin being killed off by the frost giant wolf. And so Odin dies right there and make it seem like all hope is lost now because Odin is dead. The world tree is burning and most of the Asgardians are dead as well. Except you have Thor get angry take Mornir and go on a full on rampage to take down the frost giants. Except after he does that, 
there is a big flash out of nowhere. But we learn that was the end of Ragnarok, except the story jumps back into the time period where Thor is locked up. When we learn the true identity of Donald Blake, and we learn it is actually Baldur reborn. Because remember, when it comes to Ragnarok, once all the gods are killed, they are reborn into new bodies. Thor and Baldur reborn on Earth, and there is a good reason why. Odin plans to come back and take over both Earth and Asgard. For now, Thor and Baldur have to protect Earth and get it ready for the return of Odin. But this is the section where we learn why Donald Blake is so big on the Brodox not giving up on the project with Thor. This leads perfectly into Ultimates 1 and 2 where we saw Thor appear. He had different kind of weapon and these big circles on his chest. Well we learn that the Brodox made the hammer that Thor used in those stories. But the harness and the hammer were man-made to give Thor the abilities he had on Asgard so he can have those powers here on Earth as well. And when I say this fit perfectly into the ultimate story, you'll see what I mean here in a few seconds. Because we pick up with Captain America when he was found by S.H.I.E.L.D. And this tells us this is the beginning of the ultimate story. With Captain America being found, it led to S.H.I.E.L.D. making their ultimate program. But shortly after doing that, of course, that was when Thor popped up. And people want to know who was this Thor person. And Thor was not camera shy. He actually let the world know who he was and what his goals were. But you have Thor and Baldur doing what they think is the right move, getting Earth ready for their father. And so you have Thor meet up with Nick Fury. And remember, back in Ultimates 1, when Nick first met Thor, they did not see eye to eye. That to Thor, Nick only wanted Thor to build up his army of heroes, where then Nick in the US could use them to handle war issues against other countries. That is something Thor did not want to be all about. But Nick has Thor a phone so when Nick calls for Thor's help, Thor will come. But the big question is, how was Loki able to come back to Earth after being locked away by Odin? Well remember that Loki said to his second in command when he was Baron Zemo about the Norse Stones how a set of three can open a portal to a different realm that is part of the world tree. Well, there was only seven known realms, and so you should only have 21 stones, and that is it. Except there was an eighth set to make it 24 stones total. This eighth set opens the door to the realm that Loki was locked away in. And that is how he came back into the ultimate Marvel Universe. But with him coming back, he came back around the same time the Hulk went crazy in Ultimates Volume 1, where the Ultimates were trying to defeat the Hulk, hoping Thor will come in. Except while they were doing that, Thor and Baldur sensed that Loki was back on Earth, and they know that their evil third brother is back and they are going to have to make sure to protect the earth from their evil brother. But once Thor and Baldur agree on what they have to do, that is when Thor teleports to where the Ultimates are at and smashes down on the Hulk. We all know what happens next because it took place in Ultimates Volume 1. But the book ends right there. So to give my thoughts on about Ultimate Thor, to be honest, I truly do like this book a lot. With Jonathan Hickman being the writer of the book, he did an amazing job on the book. He only had four issues, that's it. It was a four issue mini series, and he did an amazing job to do the origin of Thor, Loki, Balder, and Odin, and also Asgard as well. It was a big task that he took up and did an amazing job with, with just four issues. Now, the only problem I had with Ultimate Thor is it came out too late. What I mean is that if you were like me who grew up reading Ultimate Marvel, one of the big questions that everybody had was, 
what is the origin of Thor? That was a big question a lot of people had because you learn the origin of Spider-Man, the X-Men, Fantastic Four, Captain America, even Iron Man, even though his origin story got you know retconned. But long story short, you learn the origin of all these other characters. But with him to Thor, it was kind of this game of is he really Asgardian or is he some kind of crazy man who believes that he is Asgardian? It was kind of tiptoeing back and forth between those two things for the longest time ever. Even though we had Ultimates 2 where, you know, Odin appeared in that end of the storyline, our new Ultimates, we still never learned the true origin of Thor until like almost 10 years after the Ultimate Marvel Universe was made that's how crazy it was how late it came out it took almost 10 years for this book to come out and say this is the origin of thor and asgard odin loki balder like it took 10 whole years after we got ultimate marvel now to be honest it worked out because you had jonathan hickman come in and say you know what let me do it and truthfully he did an amazing job but i feel like they should have tried an ultimate thor comic a long time ago a long time ago you gave almost everybody else a title except thor it's kind of weird but anyways guys this is where we're going to end today's video and so please leave me a like down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future also any suggestions on books i should read well please let me know in the comments below because you never know your suggestion could be a future video down the road but guys i'm out of here and i will see y'all next time later